I'm starting on the uh, rear drums, the rear disc brake conversion. Again, it's from Auto City Classics. Uh, you can see this one here is pretty dang greasy, so I don't know if it's an axle seal or if uh, something inside is leaking brake fluid. You can see this side is much cleaner, rusty, but there's no grease on it. So I'm thinking it's probably an axle seal, but we'll rip it down and see what's inside there. there first, I'm going to start on uh, just pulling off the drum and then starting to take off the backing plate and all that. Ooh, that's nice and yummy in there. So the first step was I took off the uh, main springs that held this whole assembly on. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I hate drum brakes for this reason. Uh, they're hard to work on. Anyways, I just took those out. I'm not going to reuse any of this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then once that's out, there's actually these studs here, which were just held on by some three quarter inch nuts. So once those are off, you can get a wrench in there easily, like a ratcheting wrench. Save yourself some time if you have it. A ratcheting wrench. Crank those down or uh, loosen them up, I mean. And then you can just uh, tap out on the drive shaft, or on the axle shaft. Usually you can just tap it out by hand. Usually you can just tap it out by hand. Okay, you can see it started moving now. Now you can just wiggle it out. And there it is. You can have some fluid that comes out and drips into your pan. Um, but then you can completely pull this axle shaft out, and then you can continue to pull off this backing plate. Now I'm down here working on the uh, bracketry for this disc brake kit. This thing has been a real pain in the ass for the rear on this thing. Um, so I had to go up and I got a couple different brackets to try out. Uh, I know none of them are going to work the way they are stock. So I'll have to modify or make kind of a collaboration of all this stuff here. Uh, luckily, Auto City Classic guys have been really good as far as trying to get what I need to make this kit work. Uh, this is a weird rear end, so none of the stuff that came stock really worked. You can see I have this bracket bolted up, but it's all, it's not right. Uh, long story short, it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm going to make all that work today, and uh, I'll show you guys how I do it, and hopefully none of you guys have this problem. Well, if you do, uh, here's the video. Bro, bro, <laughs> there's a modified bracket. You can see the original versus what I have now. Cut off quite a bit there to make it clear. I just used a cutoff wheel and a grinder. Turned out pretty good. So now it'll actually fit on the axle the way it's supposed to. So now I can just uh, prime it and paint it and it'll be done. All right, so I'm down here working on this rear disc brake kit on this uh, 66 GMC, uh, if you remember. A few minutes ago I said that the uh, kit didn't work so I had to go ahead and grind and modify the bracket and whatnot so now I'm fitting this all up and you can see I have the rotor sitting on there it's all kind of just on there um, and I have this bolted up and the caliper bolted up and you can see that I still have a gap there and that gap it's about the thickness of two of these washers I already have uh, three thin washers and two thick washers. So basically you just got to space this out until it properly seats um, Without a whole bunch of bend basically um, So I started with that and then I'm gonna add a few more here and there now This is a little bit of a pain in the butt the way this is designed uh, You'll figure it out. It's kind of hard to explain over video, 
But uh, that's that. I'll show you the other side going together once I get this one because it's going to be the exact opposite of this one. Uh, so this one is my test dummy and hopefully the other one goes smoothly. Now I have uh, the bracket in there. You probably can't see. No, you can't see it. Anyways, the bracket that I modified is in there. Here I have everything all bolted in place. Uh, I have the brakes on, bags, everything is everything's all pretty much how it's gonna be. Now I have another freaking problem with this damn rear end. Apparently the seal on this side isn't sealing, so now I gotta take it all back apart and try and figure out what the hell is going on. Uh, the other side doesn't leak. This side leaked before also, so I'm not really sure what the deal is. Uh, this rear end has been a real pain in my ass. A uh, real pain in my rear end, I guess, so to speak. Um, but you can see I have the brake lines ran. These copper brake lights which are really nice, super easy to bend. Uh, you can see I have each one going to each line. And then the rubber line here which goes to the caliper because the caliper actually moves in and out. So you had to have a rubber line there which comes in the kit. Uh, I have the bags there and these big bag mounts that I just had sitting. Uh, debating if I'm going to trim them. You can see I marked them. Trim them down so they fit a little bit better. Doesn't protrude on anything. Uh, I might end up just adding another cross member from here to here because the pinion is... Uh, clears that so I'd have room to add another cross member there for support if I wanted to uh, here's the pan hard bar with the slight bend in it now you can do that with pan hard bars you can put a little bit of a bend in it because it's gonna maintain the same distance from here to here no matter what you do you can put 12 bends in it whatever you want to do um, as long as you have adjustment in your end before you end up doing that uh, yeah because when you bend something it becomes shorter in a sense. I gotta hook up the e-brakes. The exhaust currently drags, so I'm gonna probably have to do something with that. I got this little shield over the exhaust, <laughs> kinda ghetto, but it's just a license plate just to keep the heat away from that airbag that's under there. Compressor tank. So while you're working on this pickup, you can see the box is crooked. Uh, this side fits nice. You can fit Barely fit a finger between the uh, fender and the tire here. And then the other side, the reason why it's sitting crooked, has been banged up and it's all out of shape and pushed in. So it's actually sitting on the tire right here. Uh, now I could te theoretically stretch the fender out, space it out. I could do a bunch of different things. Could get different wheels and tires or narrower wheels and tires or a different wheel with a different offset. Uh, anyways, I could do a bunch of different things, but...